Yo, what it do guys and welcome back to another video. Before we get into the video, just a small reminder that what I'm about to say holds a little spoiler to it revolving a new war, but nothing major to panic about as it won't change your gameplay or decision making within your quests. After completing the new war questline, you will be able to farm for the new Archeon weapons at the new bounties located within Cetus and Fortuna post new war and old oh man I am enjoying these. There are three of them for you to pick up. Karum, a Polarm, Nethiri, Jewel Daggers, and a Verdalak, a Whip. However, they all hold something pretty special to each one. Starting with the Karum. By holding your block button and then attacking, you will slam your Polearm into the ground and retract it with such force to proc electric shocks to enemies around you. I personally think this is one of the coolest in terms of style and animation and unfortunately, unlike the next two weapons, I haven't been able to make an end game build solely for this mechanic that it provides. The damage is built for slamming, so I stuck with a traditional scaling hybrid of melee builds. This is focused on scaling damage, scaling critical and scaling status with viral and slash emphasis and finish off this build with the usual utility of attack speed and range. And when you pair this with Naramon Focus Tree, you can easily sit within high damage and scaling and you can take on the steel path enemies with just your normal attacks. Up next is the Nefiri, and oh my goodness, does this weapon absolutely delete enemies in your way. But before we jump into that build, this weapon, when normally attacking without no block or directional control, will attack twice, then breathe out four fireballs from your Warframe's mouth. Now this idea is so unique, and when you pair it with the likes of Chroma's Fire Breath, it just adds to the fun. You can use a similar build to the Karum that I showcased before this weapon if you want to center it around the fire breathing mechanic. However, these daggers have innate slash procs. This means that we shift the build, focusing into a heavy attack build, and the damage it does just melts enemies in front of you. There is also a mod set from the bounties named Amar, which will give your daggers a teleport scaling and distance the more mods you add to the set. You can put two of these on your Warframe and one of them on your dagger. It's a little janky and I feel it's a little sickening if you add pure attack speed to this animation, but the results are no joke and this thing is a monster. Keep your build centered around damage, plenty of critical, elemental combination of your choice and finish it off with some smite mods for double dip and slash procs and even corrupt charge to finish off that damage increase. Finally, we have the Verdalac. This new whip weapon when holding the block button and attacking will turn this into a ranged weapon from distance. And this has reminded me of the Quasis in a way. This is really fun to use, especially when you ramp up your attack speed by using Warframes like Valkyr's Warcry ability, or even tripling yourself and using the weapon with Mirage's clones, adding more projectiles being outsourced as damage. As for this build in particular, I really wanted to focus solely on this mechanic, and I noticed although the ranged attack does not add to the combo counter, the damage does scale from the scaling of combo mods such as Blood Rush. So for this build, I am hybriding myself, building up the combo counter by normal melee attacking, and then once I'm at max cap, I focus on the range side of the build and have some fun doing so. Again, if you pair this weapon with Naramon Focus School, this will help you keep that combo counter for longer as it slowly scales down rather than losing the combo completely. For this build, I am focusing on purely damage, with as much of it centered around critical as possible, an elemental combination of your choice, and to top it off with some attack speed and even a smite mod for that damage modification. Overall, these weapons have such uniqueness and offer some fun playstyles. And please, mod them however you seem fits your playstyle as well. But I do have to ask you guys, which is your favorite out of the three? And you can only pick one of them. Let me know within the comments section below your choice. As per usual, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, then please give it a cheeky like and share with a friend. If you're new to the channel, why not subscribe for more content? And I'll be seeing you guys again in the next video.